Today on what it's like, two legends from the 90s. We got, over here, we got the 1993 Ford Mustang, Fox Body Mustang. Over here we have 1991 Porsche 944. You're probably sitting there wondering, why compare these two? And it, why not? Both of these could be had at about the same price point right now. One's got a V8, one's got a four cylinder, and they're really not as different as you might think. But before getting into all of it, I am Jay. Picture this, you just obtained a classic car that isn't well known. It's sort of like an off the beaten path type of car and you wanna know more information about the car. Man, this is a channel for you. We feature the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars and cars that are off the beaten path. If that sounds of interest to you, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. We also have a Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel, gives you the opportunity to share your rides, stories, memes, or whatever you'd like to share, get this. If you have a car-related YouTube channel, share it on there because it's about car community. I want this channel to be more than just the car channel. It's about car community. So link is in the description. Be sure to check it out. Before diving in deep on both of these cars, a bit of an overview on both cars, starting with the Ford Mustang. This era of Mustang is often referred to as the Fox Body Mustang after the platform in which it's built on. Ford produced the Fox Body Mustang from 1979 to 1993. It was replaced with the Ford Probe, I mean, SN95 Mustang. Moving on to the Porsche 944. Porsche produced the 944 from 1982 to 1991. The 944 S didn't come along until 1987. The S stood for super. Porsche replaced the 944 with the 968 in the year 1992. Something cool that I just thought about is that these are the last cars like this is the last Fox body Mustang that Ford ever produced. And this is Porsche's last 944 that they ever produced. Very interesting. All right, let's talk specs, starting with the 1993 Mustang. Side note, this is a car by car comparison. So I'm not gonna go through all of the engines on option, just comparing what is here. 1993 Mustang, which could be had in three flavors, coupe, convertible, or hatchback. This is the hatchback version. It is 179.6 inches long, 68.3 inches wide, 52.1 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 100 and a half inches. It weighs 3,144 pounds. The original MSRP was $11,664, which is equivalent to you spending $25,418.27 in the year 2022. Let's take a look at Haggerty real quick. Haggerty has a Condition 3 Mustang at $12,900. Moving on to the Porsche 944. The Porsche could be had in two flavors, coupe or convertible. 168.9 inches long, 68.3 inches wide, 50.2 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 94 and a half inches. It weighs 2,931 pounds. Price, I hope you're sitting down for this one. The price, the original MSRP for the convertible was $50,350, which is equivalent to the holy crap price of $109,723.07 in the year 2022. Just, just wow. Anyway, Haggerty, number three condition car for the 944. They have it at $14,500. Just, man, just, just look at that depreciation. Ouch. Side-by-side -side comparison, 944 is shorter than the Stang by 10.7 inches. They are the same width. Mustang is taller than the 944 by 1.9 inches. The Mustang also rides a longer wheelbase of 6.4 inches longer than the Porsche 944. The absolutely crazy statistic is the price cap. When new, it is equivalent to $84,304.80. That's when they're new, but on the second or third hand market, this is where numbers get really interesting. So number three, condition car, according to Haggerty, it's worth $14,500. So when compared to the Mustang, the Mustang was $12,900. That's a difference of only $1,600. And if you get on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, I'm sure you could find both of these cars. I mean, you know, condition. They're not going to be in absolute superb condition, but I'm sure you could find them for around five grand. Another crazy thing to point out is the Mustang kept most of its value over the course of its lifetime, whereas the Porsche depreciated quite a bit. And I, I'm wondering, because they're starting to 
get popular again. Do you ever think that the 944 will be worth as much as it was when it was new? In the comments section below. Moving on to engines. We are not getting into every engine on offer, just the engines that are present in the featured cars. Starting with the 93 Mustang, 302 cubic inch displacement, V8, 5 liters. It makes 205 horsepower at 4200 RPM, 275 foot-pounds of torque at 3000 RPM with a compression rating of 9 to 1. Has a theoretical top speed of 130 37 miles per hour, 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds. Average fuel economy, 19.1 miles to the gallon. This Mustang has the five speed manual transmission. Moving to the 1991 Porsche 944, it has the 183 cubic inch displacement dual overhead cam inline four, three liters. It makes 208 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 207 foot pounds of torque at 4,100 RPM. Compression is 10.9 to one. Theoretical top speed, 151 miles per, zero to 60, 6.2 seconds. Average fuel economy, 18.9 miles to the gallon. And this car is also equipped with a five-speed manual transmission. Okay, so putting the specs side by side to one another, it's very interesting. The Porsche makes three horsepower more than the Mustang. The Mustang makes 68 foot-pounds more than the Porsche. The Porsche is also faster in every measure. Average fuel economy is the same, which is super interesting because the Mustang has four extra cylinders. Coming up to the door panel itself, just take a look at the different materials used. This is um, this looks like a plastic material, but it's actually like a vinyl material. It's actually a little bit padded too. And down here, this feels like the same type of material as up here, it's just a different color. This is the uh, armrest, look at how long it is. Door handle, just pull the door shut. Control center here, this is for the driver's side window, passenger side window. Unlock and lock the doors, door handle to get out here. Take a look at these mirrors. They are the same size as say a Apple cell phone. They're not very big. And I think the reason why they look so weird is because they're not extended out. They're just, they're right up against. It's kind of weird and it's kind of small. It's classic cars that have smaller mirrors but these ones because they're they're mounted right to the door itself and not extended out on an extended piece it's just they look really small and almost to the point of inadequate anyway that's my opinion and uh, down here pockets to store stuff in Coming up to the Porsche 944, I just want to show you how this opens. So this is how this door handle works. It's, it almost works like a Carmen Ghia door handle. Pops the door open like that. So just take a look at this door panel and how this door is constructed. It has a wing window, but it's not functional. The mirrors are a lot bigger on this car than they are on the Ford Mustang. Mustang mirrors are like mated right to the door. There's a space. So it gives you more visibility. Let's talk about this door panel. So it's of a plastic, plastic molding. And then down here, it's more like a vinyl, a plushy vinyl material. It has a little bit, it's a little squishy. Over here, this is the armrest. This is the door handle to pull the door shut. This is the door handle to get out. There's a nice little cubby here to store things in. There's also a nice cubby here to store things in with this little partition. Speaker, this controls the mirror. These are for the window controls. Over here, seat controls for power seat. Coming down inside the pedal box. So just check out the pedal box here. The hood release is right here in the center. Clutch, brake, gas. I honestly believe the clutch and the brake pedal are kind of small in this car, but that, once again, that's my opinion. All right, getting inside. It's pretty straightforward. It's really easy to get inside of this car. It's what the door sounds like when it shuts. Here's what over the hood impression looks like. Here's what first person looks like. Underneath the steering wheel here, there's lots of room underneath the steering wheel. Here's what I look like behind the wheel of the 1993 Fox Body Mustang. There's adequate headroom there's there's a lot of headroom all things considered for a car from this time period you're not going to hit a bump and hit your head 
coming down inside the pedal box, this is also a clutch car. But you can't see it because it's so dark. But the um, the clutch brake gas pedal, clutch is kind of small in this car too. All right, getting inside. It's actually really straightforward. That's what the door sounds like when you close it. This is over the hood impression. This is what first person would look like. There is lots of room underneath the steering wheel. This is what I look like. There's adequate headroom. There's a little bit more room headroom in the Mustang than there is in this car, but I don't think you'll ever hit a bump that you're gonna slap your head into the ceiling. Up here, sun visors, and this has courtesy mirrors that have this little like protecting i don't know that's weird maybe that just came off of the other thing but mirrors as well as vanity lights ever there's a rear view mirror here passenger has the same mirrors with lights and you could turn the lights on and off if you want to turn them off you hit the button if you want to turn them on you hit the button Let's talk about this interior. This interior is very 1990s. It's very, but it's not, the plastic doesn't feel as cheap as it looks. It's what the seats look like. Here's what the back seats look like. Nice dome light up. Here's what your sun visors look like. They're relatively small. Like here's my hand for reference. They're, they're pretty much on the small side. Here's what your rear view mirror looks like. It's got daytime, nighttime feature. Here is the other mirror. Top there. I'm gonna start her up here real quick so you can hear what it sounds like. These buttons back here are kind of interesting. You got one for the lights. This is a dead light. I'm not sure what this one does, but it, I think it's always funny that, you know, if you didn't get the switch, they just left the switch there, but blanked it out. Over here, you have your hazards, four-way hazards. This is for the defrost. This so we're going to start this up real quick and hear what this sounds like but this key makes like half a revolution before it actually starts it key off once you turn it off, it stops right here. This is a very stupid, annoying feature that I absolutely hate. I have no idea why they did this. It wasn't just Ford. Chrysler did this. All the major manufacturers did this. It's a key locking cylinder, and the key release is located directly underneath the steering wheel column right here. You push this, turn the cylinder back to that position. You can retrieve the key, and it looks like this. And I think it's hilarious because these keys, they never really change the design of the keys. Obviously, they're a key different, but they're the same as like a Mercury or a Lincoln or a Ford from the 70s. But it does have a bigger round key for the doors. This car is a five-speed stick, and I'm going to show you the shift sequence here real quick. The clutch in this is heavier than I ever thought it would be. It engages good, but it just, it's, it's heavy. So first gear is right there. Second is down there. Third, fourth, fifth, and reverse is all the way over here and back. So that's what, that's what that's like. Here's your ashtray. This controls the mirrors. And then uh, you use the D-pad to move the mirrors around. It's on the um, it's on the right mirror right now. In the center means it would cancel it out. It won't do anything. And then it's uh, controlled for the driver's side. Nice place to put change. Maybe a phone. Here's what your center console looks like. 
here is what the key looks like. It's it's a more modern key than the Mustang. And the Mustang is newer, go figure. So let's talk clutch feel in this car. The clutch is a whole lot lighter in this car than it is in the Mustang. The clutch in this is actually how I thought the clutch in the Mustang would be like. Here's what the gears are like. Here's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, ashtrays here. This is the uh, console. And it opens like that. And that is all the storage space you have. So it's almost like a wasted space, really. What are you going to put in there? Like maybe your credit cards, but why would you put credit cards in there? It, it's just weird. Nice cubby hole to store stuff up here. And it's really deep. Like here's my hand for reference. And it almost engulfs my whole hand. So you can put change or whatever in there. Radio. It's got a cassette player and lots of different radio feature buttons. Hazard lights are right there. Getting in the back seat, so you have to pick up on this, and then the seat folds forward, and this is how much space you have to get back there. There. All right. That wasn't nearly as hard as I thought it would be. I thought that was going to be really difficult. I'm going to move the seat back. I'm going to move the seat back. There is a lot of negative knee space back here. It's worse than the 70 Challenger. There's really no room back here for a full-size adult. Here's what my knees look like. They're well past the chair on both sides. This isn't even in its locked position. And yes, the seat could move up, but the seat's kind of sort of in this place that it would be in if I was up there. This is how much space you have on the other side, just for reference. So there should be more space than there is back here, but there isn't. I'm gonna slide over here real quick and see if there's more space over here. As I sat in the front seat, and I guess this seat over here has moved forward more these space but it's not nearly as bad as it was over here there's how much space i had when i was over that side there are some cruiser comforts back here there is a nice um armrest there speaker over here nice window to look out of dome light that's really bright with uh lights flanking the center dome light over here nice coat hook window to look out of it's a fixed window, it does not go down. Armrest there, and this is what your arm would look like resting on the armrest. Here's what I look like in the back. I would not want to ride back here for an extended period of time. My head is in the ceiling, and I can slouch down a little bit, but then my knees go way past the seat. This is what the uh, back to front view looks like. Escaping the rear compartment. That is as much space as you have to get out. Simply just slide over and crawl on out of here. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's like being reborn, this one. Oh yeah, there we go. We're out. All right, getting into the back. So the lever for the seat back is up here. Just push it forward and that moves the seat forward, but not a whole lot of space to get back there and doesn't look like a whole lot of space once you're back there, but we're gonna get back there anyway. In the back, or at least going to make an attempt to. I don't know if I'm gonna have to move this seat up. I'm not gonna be able to do it. Okay, so I had to cheat a little bit. I had to move the seat up because I wasn't gonna fit back here if I did. Didn't. All right, I fell back here. <laughs> there is not enough space for me to sit back here. This seat is more or less for if you have a dog or maybe a small kid or insurance purposes because it is not comfortable back here. There isn't enough space for me to pull the seat back. I'm going to try. I might be able to do it if I took the convertible top down, but I'm not going to do that because I can't do that in the uh, Mustang. So we're going to pretend that this is a coupe. It's just a, it's a convertible with a fixed roof. But here's what the seat looks like. This is what I'm seeing. 
in real time. This is how much space is back here. These seats are really, really uncomfortable. Like I said, I, this is probably just for insurance purposes. They put these seats back here. But like, look, there's my hand for reference. There's not enough room to, to put anything really back here. And just check out how this seat is designed. And that is the rear visibility out of the window. There, there is no rear visibility, really. I don't know why they made these windows so cheap that if they sat out in the sun, they just baked and they got like this. If you know anything to make these windows crystal clear again, put it in the comment section below, please, because we've we've been looking at different um, products for glass. It's not really glass. It's more like plexiglass. It's fake. But um, that's what the shelf looks like. There are no creature comforts back here. There's no armrests. There's no windows except the rear window. What back to front view looks like. I can't move the seat back so you can see it. All right, getting out. I am so sandwiched back here. I'm going to try to get out. Oh, no. My foot's stuck under the seat. Okay. All right, I'm out. Oh, man. Freedom! Oh, yeah, I'm out. Coming through the trunk back here, look at all of the space that you have because this is the hatchback model and just take a look at how this hatch works i'm going to take a step back so you can see what this looks like in its entirety these seats also fold down pressing this handle up like this and then they fold pretty flat so you can store more stuff back here all right, getting into the trunk. There is only one key for everything. And notice, this has a power trunk. And it, and it picks up like that. So that is the trunk situation. It has a really high load area, as well as it's not very deep. Like, I couldn't sit back there. It's it's here's my hand for reference of how deep it is. It pulls itself the rest of the way down. Coming to the under the hood section. We pop the hood from the inside. Now you just come up underneath here like this. This hood catch is kind of tricky. It's over here and, and you just kind of push it to the left. Pick up on the hood and there is five liter electronic fuel injection engine. So getting underneath the hood, there is a small lever right back here and you pull it back towards you. So we pop the hood and then you come up here to open the hood and the release is right, right there, right underneath. And here's what the engine looks like. Driving the 93 Fox Body Mustang. So we're going to do a pull, we're in first gear here, we'll just hit This car is nothing to really write home about, and like, I feel the same way about this car as I did the Mercedes 450 SL, because everybody puts this car up on a really high pedestal, and it's just, it's just okay. There's nothing spectacular about this car. It is just okay. The best analogy that I could give you is just like the smell in here. This this car smells like Motel 6. That is what this car is. It's just okay. Staying at Motel 6 is just okay. They make it look so great on TV with the commercials. We'll leave the light on for you. Great place to stay, I suppose, but it's just okay. The shifter, I the clutch is really heavy for one. It, it doesn't drive like... I would think that it would drive. 
I would think that the clutch would be light, would be the shift would be smooth and seamless. Like, for example, we drove the uh, Trans Am, the 2000 Trans Am. I thought that that car would be what this car is, and they're total opposites. I thought this car would go fast, it would sound good. It doesn't sound good, it sounds okay from the outside. Everything's okay from the outside, just like Motel 6. Downshift into third real quick and get on the on-ramp. We're turning 3,000 RPM at 50 miles an hour. I'm gonna go down one more. I'm gonna go in the second gear. Now I'm turning 3,500 RPM and I'm flooring it. Just okay. It does handle quite nice, but that, that's due to the fact it has a short wheelbase. has a long way to travel I always thought that these cars were really zippy I've never driven one this is the first time I've ever driven this kind this is the second Porsche that I've driven this year so let's talk about this driving experience so far the throws are very far apart the clutch has very far to travel it has very far travel the throws are very far apart and it's not as peppy as I thought it would be. I thought this would be like driving like a Honda Civic from the 90s, that kind of pep, but, it, but it's not. It's actually kind of disappointing. I thought that this would have more giddy up and go than it does. Second gear, we're gonna ride it out here and see what she's got. Let me modify what I just said. This car comes alive after 4,000 RPM. Below 4,000 RPM, this thing's dead. It's not fun to drive. Above 4,000 RPM, it becomes a totally different car. It is fun to drive. I totally understand why people like this car. Like I said, this engine's dead under 4,000 RPM, but once you get it above that, it's almost like a Honda with VTEC. Listen to that sound! Before we conclude, I want to talk more about the driving experiences of each car because I did a pocket episode and I got a lot of blowback because of how I worded what I thought about the Ford Mustang Fox body because it's got such a cult following and people put it up on such a high pedestal. I just want to clear the air. I am subjective enough to tell you if the car is good, bad, or just okay. The Fox Body Mustang was just okay. I talked to the mechanic at the shop who is a huge Mustang Fox Body fan, and he said that that car was a total dog, and I shouldn't base my Fox Body Mustang experience on that car. So we will hit this car again. He also said something to the effect that it had a 290 rear end, which would make a whole lot of sense. It wasn't a bad car, but I will say the 0 to 60 was not 6.7 seconds. It felt more like 9 or 10 seconds. If you've never saw that episode, I'd go watch it. Go to the comment section and see what people said about me. That I don't know what I'm talking about. That the Ford Mustang is one of the best cars of all time. Especially the Fox Body Mustang. And what am I comparing it to? Am I comparing it to a new car? No, I'm not comparing it to a new car. I had an 88 Lincoln Town Car that pulled harder and went faster than this Mustang did. It must have had a 290 rear end. Because that's the only explanation that makes any sense. Anyway, on to the 944. I am not a Porsche guy. Per se. I've only driven two Porsches in my whole entire life. I've driven the 944, and earlier this year, I'd driven a 968, but I didn't do that for the channel. I did that for somebody else. The Porsche is totally dead under 4,000 RPM, but once you get it above 4,000, it becomes a totally different 
animal. The clutch travel is far and the shifts are far as well. But given the choice between the two of these cars and the current market value with the pros and cons. Oh yeah, we got to get into the pros and cons. Pros and cons, starting with the Mustang. Pros, it's a hatchback, loads of storage space, plus it's got a low load floor, so easy to put stuff in there, easy access to the trunk. Five liter V8 has a cult following, better rear seat space. Cons, it feels like Motel 6 in quality and performance. Heavy clutch, notchy transmission, Key locking cylinder, which I absolutely hate. I think it's one of the stupidest features ever put on a car ever. It rides extremely rough. On to the 944. On the positive side, it is really fun to drive. It handles extremely well. 1991 models are on the rare side with less than 500 convertibles made that year. Cons, long clutch travel, small trunk. Back seat is a complete joke. Plastic window in the back in a $50,000 car, which is equivalent to $109,000 now. They put a plexiglass window in the back, so if you park outside, it gets baked and you can't use it anymore. It's totally stupid. I don't understand why companies do that, especially luxury car companies. If it was a Ford or Chevy from that era, it might have been glass. Who knows? Anyway, given the choice between the two of these cars, what is your pick? Mine, I would go hands down for the 944, and I'm not a Porsche guy, so that's saying a lot. All right, now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give me the correct name of the band as well as song title correctly to do both will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. I really appreciate all of the support. Um, tell me what you think in the comments section below. If you guys have any stories that relate to any cars that you see featured on this channel, feel free to share them in the comments section below. I love reading all of the stories that you guys share. And until next time, toodaloo!